everyone. Cherry's Red Army. Match day 15. Match preview. Reading versus AFC Bournemouth. Saturday night, 8 o'clock kickoff, UK time. In this match preview, going to take a look at this game in more detail. We'll also get an opposition view and we'll try and predict that Scott Parker starting 11. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Try and help us get to 700 subscribers at some point in the video as well. Really appreciate a like. And we want to know what you think and how you feel about this fixture as kickoff gets nearer and nearer. So, Reading versus AFC Bournemouth. We don't have a bad record at the Modeski. Well, that's what it used to be called, um, apart from last year. But how's this game going to go? Let's get a Bournemouth fan on. Let's talk match preview. There's Cook. Lewis Cook. Oh, it's brilliant. Genius from Lewis Cook. And joining me on this match preview, we've got Keithy T, Keith Thomas. How are you doing? Very good. Very good, Kirky. Very, very good. All excited for Saturday. Saturday night is going to be the big night. And last Saturday, I was fortunate to catch up with you pre-match and after the game. And we spoke in the bar, didn't we, Keithy T? I said to you, I'm worried. At some point, the championship's going to bite back. It didn't bite back in the end. We did get a comfortable and dominant clinical 3-0 win over Huddersfield. It was a, it was a great game uh, to be there and watch. Definitely. I was nervous before the game as well. Um, you're, you know, um, as we go on, that tension is going to increase more and more and more. But you've got to say he's got it right. He's got the shape right. Um, the players are playing for each other and it was a really clinical professional performance that we saw on Saturday. Uh, superb. Let's talk Dom Solanke then. He, uh, he got up to 10 goals now for the season. I think that's eight at home. I think seven towards the Ted Max stand, the stand that he clearly loves. Um, but I challenged him at the start of the season. Could he take us to 20 goals and that would take us up the league? I was confident of that. And he's looking like a, a top striker nowadays. It's it's amazing how when you when you change the shape a little bit and play to his strengths, what he can do. And uh, he's getting he's getting service, which he didn't really have last season. As you know, I was a big exponent of him last season. But I think this season he's just gone up another level and... His all-round game from his defensive work, which is often overlooked on the set pieces, is superb. His hold-up play, his linking in play, he's, um, he can run the channels, he can do all manner of the game. And now he's got his scoring boots on. I think we're seeing why we paid the money for him. He's, he's, he's key for our promotion chances this season. And if we can keep him fit, and he looks so hungry... He, he is he is some player. He really is. His upper body strength is uh, he's not he's not a, he's not Romelu Lukaku, but he he can hold off defenders. He's, yeah, he's uh, he's rapidly turning into my favourite player, and uh, really really excited to watch him every time I'm there. Not just all about the goals, though. Another clean sheet. Um, behind that, my second man of the match on Saturday was Lloyd Kelly. I thought he was fantastic. We don't see many mistakes out of Gary Cahill, but he did have a slip up in the first half. Kelly was there. He came round to cover. And also Jack Stacey is showing himself that he wants to keep that position when Smith is fit. I think every time Jack Stacey's played, we don't concede goals. So defence also doing their job. Mark Travers as well. Yeah, the foundations are, are are there. It's it's um it's so important that they're communicating at the back, and that's what Gary's brought in. But uh, Kelly, 
improving every game as well. He, he's starting to get his distribution right. Those little lofted balls in for Dom to uh, latch on to another side of his game. We know he can pass. And uh, I think the captaincy role has, uh, has brought out the best of it in him. And I think Jack Stacey, isn't he looking a little bit Frano-esque, should I say? Mm-hmm. If he's running down the line and he's, he's powerful. We've always known he's physical, but he's bringing with his relationship with Christy, who I'm sure we're going to come on to talk to as well, uh, 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 just another dimension to that right-hand side, which has looked a little bit lacklustre at the beginning of the season. Final thought then on that game, and I mentioned it as well afterwards, that uh, this feels very familiar, but also very different under different yep. management. It feels like we've got a squad here that are all playing for the badge. There's a lot of players, very, very good players, by the way, that are not getting starts but there doesn't seem to be any dramas behind the scenes. When they come on, they play their part, they make a difference. And that's what you're going to need if we're going to achieve something as a team. Definitely. And that was key to us, actually, if you think about the, our last promotion run. Uh, you know, the, inter- uh, the we kept on swapping over like Brett and Jan, and there was never any drama about that. Kevin Jones had a bit part to play, but was, yeah. he was key as well. And every player... In this, in this system that Scotty's got set up, it's going to be important. And I think he's communicated that well to the players. Look, you might not be featuring much in the first half of the season, but there'll be times we're going to rely on you. And, um, and he's keep, what Scotty's done is he's simplified things. You know, he plays a good, solid 4-3-3, uh, which, is, uh, which is adding little elements into it. And I think he's engaged his players to believe in the system because it is, a, it is an overly complicated, which we saw a little bit of with Tyndall and with Woodgate. And everyone can see, I've got a chance to get in there. You know, uh, I've got a chance. Give me a chance. I'll, I'll, I'll step up to the plate. So we might not be seeing Emilio at the moment. We not might not be seeing... Um, some of the other players as well, like 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 Maps, but they're going to be crucial going forward. So so it's a long season. Let's see how it pans out. But if we can maintain these levels and maintain the um, the intensity and the press and and all the basics that we're doing right, we're going to be something. We could be really on for a very very special season that will equip us to go up to the Premier League and uh, and, and and onwards with the journey. Is a long season. Our opponents then, Reading, they uh, they missed out on the playoffs last season. I must admit, I sort of written them off before a ball was kicked this season. They're currently 13th, 19 points. They have got a potential points deduction hanging over their heads at some point in the season as well. Um, how are you looking at Reading, though, this season? John Smith, is, Swift, shall we say, has uh, definitely turned up. He's played 14 games, lots of assists, lots of goals. Um, but what do you think about this Reading team 14 games in? Well, John Swift is someone I would have uh, liked to see come in a red and black shirt. I think he's critical for them. He's he's, he's creative, he's destructive in the midfield. Uh, but isn't it telling that the goals are coming from midfield and not from up top? So I think they're in transition as well. Obviously, their finances are not in a great position and they're having to be carefully managed. But... Uh, that's probably why they're inconsistent at the moment. Whether they'll come good at the, the second stage of the season and there's always a team that suddenly turns it on around about Christmas and makes that run uh, uh, remains to be seen. But uh, this will be a tough game. But I have no doubt about it. It's always a, a fixture with an edge to it. Um, there's no love lost between our two teams. So um, let's, let's, see, let's see what we do. But um, I'm still quietly confident. Let's find out more about Reading's season this season. I caught up with Jonathan Lowe from Berkshire Live on this week's Opposition View. Providing our Opposition View on this match preview, it's a pleasure to welcome on journalist from Berkshire Live, Jonathan Lowe. How are you doing? Hi, yes, good, very good, thank you. All good. And um, just tell us a little bit about how you got into your role covering Reading Football Club. 
Uh, well, it's quite a long story actually, but um, well, I've been in this area about uh, 10 years, 10 years or so. Um, covered kind of Reading on and off, combined with a few uh, news reporter roles, um, but doing this job specifically for uh, the last sort of three or four years or so, um, midway through when uh, Yapstown was in charge around 2017 time. And um, yes, yeah, so I go to all the home and away games and um, report on the on the ups and downs of Reading FC, of which there have been quite a few over the past few years. We appreciate you really coming on. Let's get into the match then. Um, Reading, sort of the wheels fell off at the end last season. They finished seventh. Did they run out of steam potentially? But going into this season, they're currently 13th, 19 points. I mean, how's that sitting with the expectations at the start of the season? Uh, well, I mean, to, to, be, to be honest, at the start of the season, uh, it was it was very much doom and gloom because they barely had any players. Um, they were under a transfer embargo for um, breaching uh, profit and sustainability uh, rules uh, laid out by the EFL. And uh, they weren't given the green light to sign any players until very late in the window. Um, so that kind of hampered their, their first month uh, and the re results really reflected that they lost four of the first five games. Uh, so it wasn't until, in, until kind of around mid-September time after the international break where we really kind of saw um, the team that uh, Velka Panic wanted to put out. And um, to be fair to him, in the transfer market, he man actually managed to get some good deals over the line. Um, had the likes of uh, Danny Drinkwater come in, um, Baba Rahman, a uh, Chelsea left back, um, who's hardly played for them, but uh, they've been really good so far. Um, and, uh, and and yes, yeah, so, so he's got some some good players uh, at his disposal, but at the same time, um, injuries haven't helped either. So all in all, it's to say it's been a bit up and down the first few months of the season. Uh, results have reflected that, and probably the league position is probably a, a fair assessment of where they are right now. Um, clearly, they're, they're one of probably. 22 sides in the division that uh, want to get promoted but uh, as we as we all know it's a long old slog and um, you know if they can get anywhere near seventh place uh, last like matching last season's seventh place performance uh, I think will be achievement I think you know realistically it's, it's probably going to be looking towards mid-table um, but there's a long long way to go because there's a potential point deduction coming as well uh, from the EFL um, as part of the punishment so um yeah, expectation really at the moment is probably just about kind of getting some stability and, and ensuring that they're not dragged into a, a relegation dogfight, um, especially, I say, with this point deduction coming up. Looking at the wins this season, six wins, one draw as well, seven losses. Slightly look like, Reading looks slightly better at home than they are away. Have picked up, though, a win away at Fulham, I believe. Um, why are you slightly better? At, why are Reading slightly better at home, though? Um, I mean, uh, I would say it's uh, the sort of the home advantage in the home crowds, but I, I'm not sure whether it gives them too much of an extra edge. Um, I think perhaps just they, 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 they you know, they're, they're more used to the surroundings. They, uh, you know, they like to get on the, on the front foot, and uh, usually when they do score first, um, then they usually go on and have a positive result. Um, clearly, uh, away from home, um, you know, you, you've got that. You know, the the onus is, is obviously on the home side and and uh, perhaps you know that they just struggle to sort of, sort of get into the game um certainly that they did on on saturday at blackburn they, they never really uh, i mean to be fair they, they matched blackburn for the first half of the game um but they didn't really look like scoring and and in the second half it only looked like it would be one winner um so i think you know just the, the um added pressure of, of being away from home perhaps uh needing to go possibly get a result uh is sort of hampered them away from home, but um, generally I, I, I don't see them being too different home or away at the moment, um, primarily because they haven't got too many players and too many uh, options to, to change things around whether they're home or away at the moment. So um, I don't think it'll be too, too much of a difference whether they're playing home or away at the moment. Always an interesting feature between Reading and Bournemouth. Um, I know Reading have lost the last two, but looking at players for Reading that potentially hurt Bournemouth, there's one player that sticks out for me, Jonathan, and that's John Swift. Eight goals, six assists. And interestingly, he's played he's played as many games this season as he did last season. Yes, yeah, he's uh, well, he's been uh, it's his sixth season at the club now. Um, and... Uh, as any Reading fan will tell you, he's, he's an absolutely brilliant player on his day. He is probably the best player in the division. Uh, however, he's got some very fragile hamstrings, uh, which tend to pop uh, every now and then. 
uh, unfortunately that happened uh, around the start of last season, I can't remember the exact date, um, but he missed a large chunk of last season and arguably had he been fit then they may well have gone into the playoffs. Um, starting the season like a house on fire, um, so you read out the statistics and uh, he's been in excellent form. Uh, last couple of games he's, he's perhaps paled off, he hasn't really made a huge contribution, uh, he got an assist against Blackpool um, last Wednesday. Um, didn't do anything at Blackburn over the weekend, um, although there was one of a number of players who kind of went missing in that game. Um, but certainly, uh, he's got the ability to unlock a defence. He's got um, great uh, ability at a set-piece situation. And, um, you know, as long as there's someone getting on the end of his crosses um, or balls into the box, then uh, Reading have got a chance of, of getting a good result. So, um, you know, as we've seen over the past few years, also, if... if John Swift plays well, then then Reading play well, and, and you do pick up a result. So, um, fingers crossed, he has a good game this weekend. Any other players <laughs> that you should be worried, worried about? I mean, I know Lucas Jow had a good season last season. I think he picked up an injury very, very late. Um, but anyone else in that Reading team that the Bournemouth team should be aware of? Um, based on the last couple of performances, no. Um, as you said, uh, you know, the key danger men uh, sort of in the final third uh, are both out injured, Yaku Meite and uh, Lucas Shaw, who I think have quite a, a bit of success uh, against Bournemouth past, uh, certainly last season. Um, so, uh, I mean, you've got players who on their day can be very good. Um, you know, Danny Drinkwater's had some very good games uh, since joining on loan from Chelsea. Um, and not the past couple of games, but before that, um, he was looking really good in that central midfield area, uh, really kind of spraying some really nice passes around and getting into some good positions. Um, at the back, I've, I like Baba Rahman, uh, the left back, I think I mentioned him earlier on. Um, he's, he's very tidy, tidy left back. Um, Luke South with goalkeeper, he, he's a very excellent shot stopper. Uh, he's come in this season um, and done really well as well. So, um, you know, the, the, each player has really got some some good individual quality, um, uh, to be honest, and, and can really hurt Bournemouth. Um, it's just that collective effort whether they can put it all together and put in that team performance, which uh, they're going to desperately need to, to get anything out of the game on Saturday. I think it's one win for Reading in the last six head-to-heads against Bournemouth. That was last season, the free one at the Modeski. I know it's, it's named slightly differently nowadays. Uh, that game was put to bed at half-time and game over for the Cherries. Going into this fixture, though, Jonathan, this Bournemouth team is very, very different under new management. How do you look at this Bournemouth side this season? Um, I've been yeah, extremely impressed with, with how they've uh, done so far this season. Um, Clearly, the numbers back that up. Um, I must admit, I, I um, you know, I see you know, it's good to see some of these sort of younger players coming through and certainly some new names um, compared to the last couple of years. And um, uh, you know, I did see. I mean, I saw Solanke playing a few games last season and sort of was impressed by him. And um, so, I'm not really surprised that he's sort of you know chipping in with, with goals fairly regularly now. So, um, you know, I, I see them as a, a, as a really solid promotion contender for this season and won't be surprised if they go back up to the Premier League um, automatically um, and uh, I think they really will take some stopping. I, I was uh, I was impressed uh, with Fulham in the first few months of the season, uh, albeit uh, they lost to Reading which uh, shows that they are beatable um, and uh, I, I fancy West Brom to do well as well but um, certainly Bournemouth I think will be, will be right up there this season and uh, you know Fair play to Scott Barker. He's, he's done a fantastic job um, in sort of galvanising the side after sort of, I guess, the, the disappointment of last season um, and uh, getting that uh, you know excellent team spirit back. Like you said, uh, in the conversation though, this is the championship. This is not going to be an easy tie. How do you see Saturday evening going? Do you have a score prediction? And are you covering this game? Uh, yes, I will be covering it. Um, I, uh, I mean, in terms of score prediction, it, I mean, you know, I say uh, Reading on their day could well beat Bournemouth. Um, however, based on the last week or so, then they haven't got uh, a chance. So, um, not wanting to sit on the fence, I'm, I'm going to go for a, a shock two-one home victory um, for Reading. Um, I say if, if Reading get on the on the front foot early on and you know, same old story, keep things tight at the back, then. Um, yeah, they might have a chance. Um, goals are, uh, are an issue um, at the moment because they, they've got a, they've basically got one fit senior striker in George Puskas, 
Uh, unfortunately, he hasn't scored in any game so far this season, so they're relying on the attacking midfielders to uh, get the goals. Um, I say they've got uh, quite a few players out injured as well at the moment, so um, they'll be relying on, on someone like John Swift to produce a piece of magic, which he's very capable of. Um, so, yeah, who knows? Let's, uh, I'm trying to be, be positive and hopefully, you know, Swift can get an early free kick or something and then get on the front foot and um, and see how a shock win because um, that's what it would be very much, uh, you know, I expect Bournemouth to be a very quality side and um, it will take some doing, but, uh, you know, as you do have special nights under the lights at the, uh, the Let Carly Sing Stadium every now and then and hopefully this is one for Reading. Really appreciate it. We wish you all the best for the rest of the season. Enjoy the game Saturday night. Okay, likewise. Thank you very much, Kirk. See you later. Thank you. Thank you to Jonathan there. You can check out his details, follow him on Twitter and Berkshire Live. Just check it out in the description. Keith, we're going to get on with the predicted 11 very soon. Now, last season when we went to Reading, it wasn't a great day out for us at all, was it? The game was over at halftime, 3-0 down. I think Wilshire came on the pitch, it ended up being 3-1. But um, we definitely want to turn that result around this season. Yeah, so I think, I think what Scotty has done is instilled a winning mentality. And uh, he will not accept the, you know, performances that are not on the level. So, you know, how when Brooksy got the uh, red card at Forest early in the season, he's prepared to, you know, come out and say this is not acceptable, you know, to the fan base. So there's an expectation that whatever happens, we're gonna. He expects us to hit hit the levels, and he's at introducing other elements to the game as well the switching over of the uh, the uh, wide players uh, is, is an interesting development maybe we'll see later on in the season he might even go inverted fullbacks uh, with Smithy able to play on the me- left he um, he might say to Zamora go and play on the right that might be an interesting thing so it's, it's lots of things going on uh, little elements each game so but he'll he'll accept nothing less than a, a a solid performance. Right, Keith. I don't quite want you to put a cardigan over that beautiful Dutch top that you've got, but I do want you to put yourself in Scotty Parker's shoes because we're going to yep. do the predicted eleven. You ready for it? Yep. So what we've got on the screen, Keith, is the starting lineup against Huddersfield. We're going to go through the squad to potentially take players out put players in. We'll start with the goalkeeper in the back four. Travers, another clean sheet. Jack Stacey, right back. Cahill, Kelly and Samura. From those five players, is there anything you want to change going into this game? Uh, no, I mean, tra- we've forgotten about Travers and what a save he did on Saturday as well. Mm. That good tip save. And he's maturing into the, the goalkeeper that, that could uh, really be exciting for us going forward. But at the moment, I wouldn't change anything about that. I think you're right. I think Zabora Stacey gives us threat down the um, down the flanks as well. Um, that looks solid. Uh, maybe on the, uh, the the midweek game, he might want to rest Cahill. Will remain to be seen, but I don't think he'll change it at the moment because I've had a full week's training. OK, let's move into that midfield three. Now, in the last two previews, I've tried to get Kilkenny out. I haven't tried to. I think he's an absolute fantastic player, but I do think certain games are set up for Pearson. Last Saturday, though, it was Kilkenny, Lerma and Billing. Does Pearson come into this game, Keith, or any other players you're thinking about? He may well be tempted to put Pearson in for Kilkenny to combat John Swift. Um, Because he's so destructive, Swift, in that middle of the park. And I think he'll want to control that with physicality. Uh, and, and we know that Pearson is a very disciplined player. He'll just sweep up in front of the the the, um, the, uh, the, the back two, the two centre backs that we've got. I mean, we've got Kelly's pace, but I think you'll want to, you know, shut that down. So this might be the game for uh, Pearson to come. 
Pearson is going in on this one, keeping Billing and Lamb, right? I assume. Yes, I am. Forward three then. Jaden Anthony on the left links up well with Jordan Zamora. Cristiano, Ryan Christie. Let's give him a mention on this one. And Dom Solanke, your forward three. Does that change? No, no. I, I think Christie's been a revelation. And uh, what I like about Christie is he maintains that press with Anthony and with Solanke. It is critical that we get that press on and we know when it's triggered and going out and hunting the ball down. We saw with uh, Man U, Liverpool, if you don't press, if you're, if, you, if you're set up to play high and not pressing, you'll be torn apart. And he is integral to that. And I think, you know, he can come into the inside. But I think, I think we'll want to maintain that pressure on the flanks uh, because that's where we really are destructive. And it also allows us to smother teams as well. They can't get out. And we saw that again on Saturday. They just can't get out because they've been suffocated all the time by this relentless pressing. And Billing as well. I mean, he's astonishing pressing that he does as well. And it's just maintaining that all the time because winning the ball high up the pitch creates that tension in their back line and they have to suddenly get on their bike and get a cover themselves and... Anthony's pace as well and Zamora's pace, it, it, it's frightening for teams if, it, if it's played properly. Uh, if it's not, you see what Man U have experienced, uh, as I say, on uh, over the weekend. You're going for one change. Are you locking that in? Yeah. We're locking it in. There we go. This is our predicted 11 for Reading. Do you agree? Disagree? Let us know in the comments. And if you would change any other players... Let us know who you would change them for. That's our predicted 11. Like you said, Keith, we're going to get your score prediction in a bit. And I want to just come back to what you said about that press. Um, reaction comes to mind when I think of a word. And on Saturday, when we lost the ball, that player who lost the ball's instant reaction was to go and run after it and get it back. Sometimes players can dwell on it and go, oh, what have I done? No, they actually went, I'm going to go and win that back. Also, when we're in possession and we try and play a ball up to Dom Solanke, you watch Ryan Christie then start running 10 yards towards Dom Solanke for seconds. And Anthony does the same. For me, that's what I was seeing so well and so much on Saturday with those reactions and trying to get beyond players and get involved with players and, and win the ball back. Absolutely. The press and uh, the ability to utilise the space properly is instrumental. Um, I know I'm wearing an orange shirt for a reason today. And what you're seeing is essentially, and it's not a rhetorical thing, is essentially the basics of total football. Uh, and the ability to also, you're starting to see players being played not for positions, but for roles instead. And he's starting to introduce that as well. That, as I say, this, this swapping over, you see every now and again, they swap over the, the two, Anthony and, and Richie. And, and Ryan Christie. Sometime, uh, Ryan Christie, uh, Matt Richie. Is asked to get confused with the like, two. He plays now. like Matt Ritchie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and, and also... You're seeing Billing sometimes. He goes a more advanced. Some, uh, and you, you might see that ball. It is so essential, though, that we get that ball back in that six seconds, six to ten seconds, and get it back and then get on our bikes and get forward. And um, winning the ball high up relieves pressure on our back line. And, um, you know, it, it, it is a squad game. The communication is really right as well. And you see the leadership, Dom, again, He's a leader up the, up the top. He's our first defender. And uh, if they can't get out, if they are suffocated, if they are, they just frustrate them and, and destabilise them, you see, you see the results that you saw on Saturday. And it is about maintaining that, that energy levels, that, that, that commitment to playing high and attacking. Uh, maybe Scott couldn't do that with the personnel he had at Fulham. But it seems that him and Richard Hughes are, 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 are very much alike in their thinking. And whereas Jason and, and Woody have been were more pragmatic, they've decided 
we're going to go for this and, and, and actually play the sort of football that I was listening to Neil Dawson last night on Sam's podcast. He was talking about Guardiola. Well, this is how Guardiola started out. This system, this way of play. And uh, sky's the limit if he could get it right. And so far, he's getting it right. The big question then. Looking forward to the game. What's the score prediction? Do the Cherries remain 15 unbeaten? Yes. Yes. Um... And I, I, I'm usually really cautious, but I think what people are saying is it's almost like teams are beaten before they've even set off, off, off the um, off onto the pitch, and that is very much again part of the system that we're playing. It is all about the psychological game, and they're going to be doing their videos reviews, and they're going to be thinking, well, who, who, who? We, we've got three or four runners now. I've got a track. And suddenly, defences, they're, they're, they're playing the low block, which suits us even better. It allows us even more to get a, a concertina up and get in their faces. And they're thinking, well, how, 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 you know, who am I going to defend? Am I going to get sucked into a battle with Dom? Because he sucks them in and creates spaces. I've got to pick up Billing. I've got to pick up Christie. I expect we're going to lose at some point. But at the moment... It's just got the basics right, and and they'll be wary, and uh, and you're starting to see low blocks and and trying to, you know, trying to trying to combat it, and it's getting harder and harder for teams. So I am confident, um, and they, as I say, if we could lock down John Swift in particular. I see no reason why we we could potentially be seeing another another great performance. Did you get a score prediction? I think I will go... I'm going to go 3-1. 3-1. Charles Red Army, 3-1. I'm going to go for 2-1 on this match preview. Keith, thank you for coming on and giving us your thoughts ahead of this game. Hope you enjoy the game. Thank you, Captain. Thank you to everyone who checked out this video. Please make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel and let us know your thoughts ahead of this fixture. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can. You can go to buymeacoffee.com slash Army. Thank you to our current monthly supporters. We actually purchased a little tiny mic that we used on our matchday blog. It really did help uh, with interviewing fans you know, during the game, before the game and after as well. So uh, let's go for it, Cherries. Let's go for 15 unbeaten. Can we do it? It's on Saturday night, Sky Sports. And uh, yeah, let's have the best game we can. Thank you to Keith and from myself. Look after yourself until next video. We'll see you soon. Up the Cherries. Up the Cherries.